This will be a demonstration of the relationship between a motor unit potential and muscle fibers and motor unit properties by using an EMG simulator. This is the cross section of a muscle and this is a longitudinal section with the motor end plates placed in the center in a motor end plate zone. The properties of a motor unit and its fibers can be optionally changed. Parameters such as number of muscle fibers, territory over which they are distributed, the firing rate, the firing threshold, muscle fiber diameter and its variability, and the jitter. Now here the muscle fibers are distributed randomly to in the left panel. A concentric needle electrode is inserted in the same way as in routine EMG. This electrode now is recording an action potential that is the sum of the individual single fiber action potentials from fibers within two millimeters of the recording tip but fibers outside do not contribute significantly. At consecutive discharges the motor unit potentials are rather constant in shape. Now I'm going to show the electrical cross-section of a motor unit by means of the so-called scanning EMG. Normally we have a little motor connected to the electrode that retracts the electrode in 50 micron step after each discharge. This is not used in routine but it's used to understand the topography of the motor unit. Here the electrode is pushed to the other side of the motor unit and we start the scanning and in this simulator it goes very quickly and you see here how the electrode is pulled and we obtain the signals from different places in the motor unit. In the right panel we see the individual motor unit potentials and how their shape varies from one side to the other in the same motor unit. And here is uh, areas with other delays and other fiber action potential and here it disappears. This is about 10 millimeters. To the left we have the amplitudes transformed into colors. Normally we do the EMG either here or here or here and obtain different motor unit potentials from the same motor unit. When we add two motor units uh, into the recording we will obtain activity from all these three different motor units if they are above firing threshold. They are different in shape but with recording but with constant electrode position these motor unit potentials are individually constant. Thus for a given recording position different motor unit potential shape indicates different motor units but when an electrode is moved the motor unit shape cannot tell if the recording is obtained from the same or from a different motor unit. Now let's look at the recruitment. Three motor units are given 5, 15 and 30 percent firing threshold. Here is with low firing rate and it increases with slightly more activity and then the next motor unit is starting with low frequency and then the third one is coming in and all three motor units are um, active. The one with the lowest threshold is going with the highest frequency. Now let's look at examples of pathology. First, collateral renovation. In this situation the surviving motor unit incorporates denovated muscle fibers around so-called collateral sprouting. In EMG this is seen as increased amplitude and duration of the motor unit potentials and in biopsy it is seen as large grouping. Often the newly re-innovated muscle fibers show different degree of atrophy which occurs during the time when the fibers are without 
its innervation. Since the conduction velocity in the muscle fibers is related to fiber diameter, we may see this variable atrophy as increased dispersion of the motor unit potential. This is best seen away from the end plate, where the effect of fiber diameter is much more pronounced than close to the end plate. Another phenomenon seen in early re-innovation is the uncertain neuromuscular transmission. We can increase the jitter from normal 20 to 80 microseconds and we see the variability in shape on consecutive discharges. If the jitter is set to even higher value, say 110 microseconds, then the instability is much more pronounced and individual spike components are missing. And now myopathy. Here is a normal motor unit with normal motor unit potential. Does it become polyphasic when we delete muscle fibers as we are doing here? No, this one does not become polyphasic. It becomes shorter and lower in amplitude. Let us return the fibers to the normal one and instead uh, indicate the increased fiber diameter variation that we see in biopsies in myopathy. And here you see how the fiber diameter will influence the shape profoundly where the signal all of a sudden becomes polyphasic, more clearly seen if we record uh, more distally in the muscle away from the end plate <coughs> and much less pronounced or even not at all if we go very close to the end plate. We can also simulate macro EMG by inserting an electrode with a very large uptake area and you see that the response that we obtain is not very sensitive to the position of the electrode typical of macro EMG or we can simulate the single fiber EMG with a small uptake area where we get small spiky signals very sensitive to recording position and sometimes we can record from two muscle fibers a potential uh, pair but this is not the topic of uh, this uh, video a simulator is really not absolute reflection of reality but in this case, the parameters that we use optionally are sufficiently flexible to reflect both the normal and the abnormal motor unit. More information about how we have used this model uh, can be found here. Thank you.